Hi, I'm Deanna Guerrero and I'm with Prayer Warrior Ministries, so welcome to this message, this teaching. I'm really excited to share with you. Today we're going to talk to you about, or we're going to discuss, let us hold fast to our dreams. And of course, as we always do, we're going to start in Isaiah 62, 6, which is our founding verse for Prayer Warrior Ministries. This is who we are. We are a praying ministry and a teaching ministry. Teaching from the Word of God, standing on the Word of God, praying the Word of God. So let's start in Isaiah 62, 6. I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, who will never hold their peace day or night. You who are his servants, and by your prayers put the Lord in remembrance of his promises. Keep not silence. We will not keep silent. We will always continue to proclaim God's good news um, and his promises in our lives. Amen. That's what we do. Now in this teaching, we are focusing on once again in Hebrews 10.23, and it says, let us hold fast, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. The Amplified said, So let us cease and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess in our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. So I would encourage you to go back to the two previous teachings that we've been um, studying, which is the place of faith, because we learned that faith is a place. Just as right now I'm in a building. I'm inside. So I'm inside. A built building but if I were to walk outside I would be outside of the building well faith is the same way you're either in faith or you're outside of faith it's not an absence of faith it's just where are you abiding where are you right now so go back and watch the series or listen to the series um, a place of a place of faith so we're going to go on. And in that teaching I had talked to you about in, in the book of Hebrews when Paul said this to these people. He, they had been believing for something for 20 years. For 20 years. But Paul was telling them, don't let go of your dream. Don't let go of the confession, the profession of your faith that you've been standing on. Don't change your confession about the dream. Keep saying the, the, the same thing that God is saying about it. Keep feeling the same thing about it as when it was first dropped into your spirit, when you were first given that dream. Do you remember how excited you were when thinking back about something that you're, you're believing God for, the dream or the vision that you have? Do you remember how excited you were when God gave that to you? And then as time passed and hindrances come and things distract you, um, the cares of this world come, as a, they have a way of doing, and it changes the plan. And you get off track and you're not so focused on that plan anymore. And, and I just kind of think, wouldn't it be wonderful if God were to tell you, okay, Deanna, Here's the plan. Here's the plans and purposes that I have for you. And I'm like, yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, but not only is he going to give me that, but he's going to give me all the plans that I'm going to have to go through for the next 15 to 20 years in order to get there. He's going to say, here's what's going to happen when you get here. And then um, you're going to do this. And then you're going to go here. And then you're going to do this. And then this is going to happen. And, and but you, it, ultimately, you'll end up here. And that's how it's going to turn out. But if God were to do that, then why would we need faith, right? If he did this, he'd actually be violating all of his promises that said that we need to stand in faith, that we need to walk by faith, that the just shall walk by faith. If we already knew everything that was going to happen, where would faith come in? We wouldn't have a free will because he ultimately just, we'd be like on a, a game board and God would just be rolling the dice and Okay, one, two, three, four. Like when you're playing Monopoly and he's moving you along instead of you going on your free will, using the Word of God and the Holy Spirit as your GPS, your light, your lamp to get there, right? 
God isn't going to lay everything out for us. We, we have to know that. We should know that by now. He'll give us one piece of the puzzle at a time. And each piece, as we come to know it, each piece is connected to the other piece. And then eventually it will create the perfect picture of God's plan for your life. And maybe um, you've seen this happen and you'll look back at things that have transpired over your life and you look back and you're like, oh, okay, Lord, I see what you are doing. That's pretty cool. Man, I didn't see that coming. You are so smart, God. <laughs> I'm sure this has occurred to you. It's happened to me several times. And I'm sure it's gonna happen a lot more in the future. The pieces have to be connected by faith and in His Word. By, his, by faith in His Word. Every step that you make must be a step in faith. Psalms 37, 23, and I want you to really keep notes of these verses so you can meditate them. You can meditate on these scriptures. Um, Psalms 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. In your journey of faith, you're going to have to be very sensitive to God. You're going to have to be very sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Abraham's our father in faith, right? And he took steps that were ordained by God. So we have to take steps ordained and directed by God so that we'll end up in the destination for which he's called us, the plans and purposes that he's called us to. We've got to stay on the pathway that he's called us to. Hebrews 11, 9 through 10 says, By faith, he, Abraham, sojourned in the land of promises as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham didn't know where he was going, but he was always looking. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. He was always looking. He was looking up at the stars. He was looking down at the sand. He's looking all around, seeing who God sent it into him, right? Let me ask you, are you looking today? Are you looking? Are you looking for what God has for you? Are you looking for the manifestations of God's promises in your life? Are you anticipating? You have a sense of anticipation. Oh, it's coming. I could feel it. I'm one day closer. Thank you, Lord. Are you laying aside all the all the doubts and all the um, all the doubts and fears that the enemy would try to bring to you? You say, no, nope, nope, I don't have time for that, Satan. I am I am on a mission. I am going closer. I am on the pathway that the Lord has for me. I'm not I'm not getting involved in that. I'm not taking on that spirit of fence. No, 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 no. I'm expecting God's um, promise to happen, and so I'm going forward. <laughs> And so you have to get that spirit of expectancy and know that God's building something in your life. It's your job to look for, for what's being built by God and made by God in your life. How do you do, how do, you do this? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about these next couple of weeks. You need to create a proper atmosphere and refuse to fear anything that would stand in your way. Expect especially fear. The enemy's going to come against you and try to steal that dream. And let's talk about creating a proper atmosphere. There are things that you can do to create a proper atmosphere um, for your dreams. And then there are things that will create an improper atmosphere. Now in my household or in my office, I like to have things that are inspiring to me. I have up my vision boards. I have things, you know, I have pictures of places I've gone. I have running and um, medals from running and marathons and, and such. And I've got my ordination um, plaque up for when I was ordained. Um, I've got pictures of, of my spiritual parents where I was able to get pictures with them and meet them in person. Um, I have um, goals before my eyes and I have worship music playing um, in the car, in my home. I have teaching tapes going on and um, I have the scriptures around me. I want an atmosphere of faith. I want faith coming at me, but I don't want it to become where it's my ears, my eyes, my ears are dull of hearing. I want to be fresh hearing, so I've got to stir myself up, and I have to make a proper um, commitment to do that every day. I've got to stir myself up. And sometimes when I'm just like, what am I doing, Lord? Is it making a difference? And I have to say, yes, it is. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Okay, if I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, what am I conquering? How am I going to do it today, Lord? And i got to get out there and just do it one step at a time. And 
you have to do that as well. You need to have your home where your children are not um, are not fearful of expressing their dreams and the desires without being shot down. Like maybe you've asked them to, to do the dishes. And I remember this from when I was a young girl. We, you know, I had many cousins. My family um, was very large. It was a country um, family. And we would, um, as we got, the older kids would, and as I got older, I was one of the younger cousins, but um, then there was a time when the older ones were married, and so it was just me and my younger cousins, and um, Grandma had made the um, lunch, um, Sunday dinner, and so then we were, we were cleaning up, and you know when you're young, you especially hate doing those chores. We didn't have dishwashers. She didn't have a dishwasher. We were fortunate that she had running water, so we wash up the dishes, and I said, well, when I grow up, um, I'm gonna have a maid and then all my cousins laughed ha 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 well fortunately for me I didn't allow that to discourage me I was like oh no you can laugh now but I am gonna have a maid <laughs> and lo and behold when I did grow up and I was married I didn't have one right away but when I was married you know when my kids were growing up I did I wouldn't call her a maid but I had you know household help and a nanny but I had spoken it and I had dreamed it and it was a heart's desire and so I went towards that and so you need to create that atmosphere in your family if you have little ones or you maybe you have teenagers and they're believing for something and they come to you and you're like oh my lord how could we pay for that that's really expensive but you know a very um, inspirational um, um, man I've I hear his teaching a lot I sit under his his teaching he said God didn't ask you to pay for it he asked you to believe for it so what do you need to do we well, need to sow a seed so when your children or someone around you your spouse even comes to you says this is what I want to believe for this is what I want then you say okay I'll get an agreement with you um, do you have a seed and if it's your child they can go get one of their favorite toys or maybe they've got some allowance or birthday money um, saved and you say okay well, where do you want to sow it and then you pray over it and then you sow it and then you give them the word seed okay what word are you standing on so and, and, and then you might say do you have a picture of that item that you want and then you can go to the internet Google it you know used to we go to magazines and so forth now you can just go to the internet and um, one of the things my husband does is he has a picture of it on his phone and I think that's an excellent way too. you can have a picture of it so you're looking at it and you're thanking the Lord thank you Lord I've sown my seed for that and I thank you Lord it's mine thank you Lord and you start rejoicing now that would create an atmosphere in your home a faith where people aren't afraid to dream. They're not afraid to, to put it out there. You know, and that's what we want to do. And when you do this, you're really activated and you're going to attract miracles in your life because faith moves God. God is moved by your faith. And actually, fear activates the devil. It's kind of like, you know, you've heard of like different animals. Like if you're in the jungle, they could smell your fear. And so same way. The enemy can smell your fear. So if you feel like you're getting doubtful about that thing, get in the Word of God. Say, oh no, I don't have time to be fearful. Let me get in the Word of God. Let me let me see what this says here. It says that um, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I thank you, Lord, that you are meeting this need. I thank you, Father God, you say that to delight yourself in you and you will give me the desires of my heart. And you start feeding your faith. You turn on um, a teaching tape such as this and you get it going in your ears and you start meditating the scriptures because that's what's going to activate your faith and it's going to send the enemy running because it says... Um, that you're going to hold up your shield of faith with which to quench every fiery dart that the wicked one brings against you. And one of the um, fiery darts that he brings against you is a spirit of fear or doubt. And he's going to make it look the opposite of what you're believing for. And so you can't believe what he's making it look like. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Now it also says further down in this scripture that he is a rewarder of those that have faith, that diligently seek Him. So with a faith-filled atmosphere where the Spirit of God is, is present, it causes, it, it causes our God-given dreams to come to pass. So just know that. A fear atmosphere, though, hinders them, and it will delay the promise from happening. Our dreams will be fulfilled by faith. Okay. In life, most people's greatest um, fear is failure. They are scared of failing. So sometimes you just don't try something because you're fa you, maybe you failed in the past and you don't want to fail again. Um, they're actually in fear um, and so they won't step out into their dreams. 
and, and everything, they're, they're scared, um, and so they're, they're like paralyzed, and they won't step out into the dream, and everything else will, will just fall apart. They're, they're afraid everything will fall apart, and so that's what happens because they have that fear. But we are people of faith. <laughs> Say that with me. I am a person of faith. We're not moved by what we see. Say, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by the word of God and what God says about the situation. Hallelujah. So even if it looks like your manifestation's never coming to pass, you must, you must allow faith and confidence in the, from the word of God to rise up within you. Now, it's only going to rise up within you if you've got it in here. And that's the purpose of, that's the reason it's so important that you build up your spirit man on the inside. You have to resolve to depend on and to have faith in God alone. You're not going to rely on your job. You're not going to rely on the government. You're not relying on some deal or this or that happening. You're going to rely on God alone. He's the one that's going to make it happen. He's got an infinity number of ways to make that thing happen for you. And all you have to do is listen to his voice and do what he tells you to do. To be led by his spirit. Even when obstacles come and even when the pressure is applied, you're going to stay in the word. You're going to do what God says to do. Um, it might be opposite of what the world would do or the world's telling you to do. But you're going to do what he's telling you to do. Now Micah... In the book of, book of Micah faced opposition. And we're going to look at his declaration when he faced it. And let's go to Micah 7, verse 7 through 8. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the Lord of my salvation. My God will hear me. Now he's speaking out to himself because he, he knows that that's, that's where his deliverance is coming from. Now let's continue. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. Now he's talking to the devil. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in the darkness, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So he's telling the enemy a thing or two. And then he goes on to say, I will look into the Lord. I will look into the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. And that's what God wants. And that's what he expects his children, and we're his children, right, to speak. And God rejoices with us when we show confidence to overcome the adversary. But Satan, Satan's the one who rejoices against you. God rejoices with you. Satan rejoices against you, especially when you make a mistake. Have you ever made a mistake? <laughs> I've made plenty, and I'm sure I'm going to make some more. And then the enemy is quick to point out those mistakes to you. But I just think that, thank you, Lord, that you are a God of great grace, and you perfect my, even my mistakes. Thank you, Lord. No one, no one is, no one on this earth is without a mistake. Abraham, our, um, our father in faith, he made mistakes. David made mistakes. Everyone except for Jesus made mistakes. Right. So I want you to remember that the next time you make a mistake. You might make a mistake concerning your dream. Maybe you've already given up on it. The enemy is going to try to get you to wallow in self-doubt. To think, oh, you made that mistake. Now your dream's never going to happen. You really screwed it up now. Might as well just <laughs> let that one go. But remember, it's not failure to fall. But it is failure when you stay down. So get back up. Micah said, when I fall, I shall arise. So you have to decide to go forward towards your dream. you got to look the giant in the eye and make the determination that if you fall, you will arise no matter how far you've fallen. Maybe you've fallen and you've put your dream on the back burner. So maybe you have put it on the shelf. But I'm telling you, take it, dust it off. Take it off the shelf, pull it back and say, okay, dream. Lord, how, where do I start? Where, what step do I take now? Dust it off, blow the dust off, and go forward. Micah said, when I fall, I shall arise. You have to decide to go forward towards your dream and make the determination that if you fall, you will arise no matter how far you've fallen. Maybe you've fallen, but it doesn't matter. You're going to go forward with the Word of God. 
you got to make that determination. Okay, um, let's look again at Psalms 37, verse 23 and 24. The steps of a good man are ordered to the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. The devil wants and expects you to quit. He knows what he had to do last time to make you quit. He's got notes on you. And you got to say, no, that worked last time. It's not working this time. No, I know what failure feels like, and I'm not going to feel that again. I'm getting back up. I'm going to rise. What if I had arisen last time? Then I'd be further than I was today. So no, I don't want to go back there. I'm going to rise. And he, he wants you to say, where is God? Oh, where are you, God? Why did this happen to me? Or maybe I didn't hear God. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this isn't after God. He's after your dream. He wants to discourage you. But don't let him. He wants to, he wants to get you in fear and to paralyze you. You've ever, you ever been paralyzed by fear? I have, and you just didn't, you just, I don't know what to do, so you did nothing. But instead, you should just be taking one step. Thank you, Lord, victory is mine. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony, and I know that you saw so-and-so through this, and so I know that you'll see me through it, this too because you are no respect of persons. Or you go back to past victories and you say, remember that time, Lord, when you did this for me? Well, I believe that you can do that in this time again. And sometimes when I don't have a testimony like that, I'll just go back to the Bible and I'll say, well, Lord, you parted the Red Seas. I'm not asking you to part a Red Sea. I'm just asking you for a solution for this. Now, I might not know what to do in this situation, but I know the one who does. Thank you, Lord. You say, if anybody lacks wisdom um, to ask of the giving God, and you will give it to me liberally. So I thank you, Lord, that you give it to me liberally. You are not a man that you should lie. Thank you, Lord. And so you just have a good talk to yourself out loud, and it's going into the ears of the enemy, too. And he's like, oh, man, she got the word out. She got the sword out, and she's slicing me up with the word. Oh, yeah, we are. We got the sword of the Spirit, right, <laughs> which is the word of God. <laughs> We're preaching ourselves happy here. <laughs> you got to remember that his goal is to get you into fear. He wants you to be fearful. He wants you to be fearful of stepping out into faith, into the biggest of dream. He wants you to. He don't want you to step out into your big dreams. He doesn't. He doesn't want you to get the desires of your your heart. No way. He wants you to be afraid of failure, and that's what he keeps dangling in front of you. Just swipe it away and say no. God wants you to get it into your spirit that if you fall, it's not over. <laughs> he wants you to determine that no matter how many times you fall, that you're going to get back up. You're going you're gonna to arise. With his hand, he's going to pick you back up. You shall arise. Now I know you've got some dreams and desires. Just take a moment and think about that. What dreams and desires have you maybe cast aside or put on the shelf? What are you believing for? Maybe you're getting a little bit discouraged on those things that are on your vision board, your dream board. Don't. And make sure that if you haven't started, that you do start. Habakkuk 2.2 says to write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets that he who runs may see it. So make sure that you've written down your dreams and your desires, okay? And we all have dreams and desires. God made us that way, okay? we got to make sure that we are keeping him before our eyes so we can go before him. And a lot of times it seems like the things that God puts in our hearts to do are more than we could ever do in our natural ability. But that's okay. It seems like what God's given us is more than I could ever accomplish. And that's a good thing because then I kind of think you know that that's from God because there's no way you could do it on your own. And if you can do it on your own, then I'm thinking you're not dreaming big enough. So start where you are and go forward. If you could do it in your natural ability, then you, it wouldn't require faith. And God's a faith God, right? So in the next few weeks, we're going to learn some principles that help us to propel us into what we are to be, okay? We're going we're gonna to learn how to do, in some cases, recapture. So, like I said, some people have cast their dreams aside or put them on the shelf or even forgotten about them, the dream that it, that's been stolen from them. Um, John 10.10 10 tells us, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. 
God wants us all to live the abundant life. Not just some of us. Not just me and not you. No, he wants that for you too. And not just for you, but for me too. There's enough for it to go around. <laughs> he wants us all to walk in prosperity and to live in his absolute best at all times. Why do we see such struggles? Why do we experience such struggles? Now, he did tell us that there are going to be challenges, that tribulations are going to come, but we've got to have a blessed hope where we know that, that, that we're going to get through this, right? Some, people, some believers are walking in abundance, and others just never seem to, to get to the place of abundance. They're always in lack. And we got to know that there is one God, one true God. There is a God who promises to bring abundance, but there's also a thief who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. So what you, you focus on, what you, you focus on is going to be what you bring to you. It's a magnet that you're bringing to you. What you complain about, you bring about. What you praise, you raise, right? It raises you. And so that's the, the, what we're going to focus on. We want to focus on what everything that God has promised us. Satan's goal is to steal your dreams because he knows that if he can do that, he can destroy your future and he's after your future. Now remember... That what we started with in this teaching was let us hold fast the prof our f profession, our confession of faith. Let us hold fast. Wrap our arms around. Put our weight upon our confession of the dreams, the goals, the promises. Put our whole weight upon it, right? On the promises that God gave us. So we have to remember that if Satan can't steal our dreams, our confessions, that he can't steal our future. Remember how we studied reparation? You can look up this word. Reparation is a war term. It means that what was stolen, destroyed, and war, and we're in a spiritual war, right, must be repaid, restored, what was destroyed to its former glory. It has to be rebuilt. And so what Satan has stolen or destroyed, we're going to call back into us. Proverbs 6, 30, 31, we're going to turn there. It tells us that if a thief be found... I'm going to go back there. And I want you to, to pray about this, that God re reveal those things to you, your dreams, your desires, that he would have you to go towards, but also to reveal to you those things that the enemy has stolen from you. Okay, Proverbs 6, 30, 31 says, Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry, but if he is found out, he must restore seven times what he stole. He must give the whole substance of his house, if necessary, to meet his fine. So this is your homework assignment. I want you to meditate these scriptures that I've given to you. And then ask the Lord to bring to your mind what the enemy owes you in lost revenue. Lost.